everybody! Today I'm going to talk about a really basic topic. So the question today is, what is a theory and why is it not just straightforward to learn stenography? So in the context of machine stenography, a theory is just a set of rules that tells you how to use this keyboard. For example, there could be a rule that says if you press E and U at the same time, it makes the short I sound, the I sound. You could also have a rule that says when you press T on the left side, it makes the word it, and so on and so forth. So learning a complete theory entails learning a full set of rules that allows you to type anything in the English language. As you can see, the keyboard is very customizable, so there's many different ways people have decided on what rules to use, which created a lot of different theories. Here's a chart of just some of them. It is a lot of theories, but it gets crazier than this. Basically, every stenographer has their own theory. Everyone starts out learning a base theory, but then they customize their dictionary until it becomes a unique piece of material that only they can fully understand. This may especially happen when a stenographer starts out with one theory, but switches to another or combines multiple theories and so on. So that's why, apart from maybe two people who started with the same base theory, most stenographers don't even speak a mutually intelligible language. Each stenographer's experience is independent. So I started off learning Lapwing, which has its roots in Stened theory. And now I'm learning Tri-C theory, which as far as I can tell has its roots in Phoenix theory. Here's just a couple of changes that I've already seen in the first couple of weeks. In Lapwing, to type the word the, you press T on the right side, the final T. But in Tri-C theory, to type the, you type TH on the left side, the initial side. Another one is that in Lapwing, if you type asterisk PL, it corresponds to the MP sound, such as at the end of camp or swamp. But in Tri-C theory, asterisk PL corresponds to the MB spelling of the M sound, such as in the words comb or lamb. And I'll probably go more into detail about theories in another video. For now, I just want to explain three more terms that usually come up when you're describing stenographic theories. So the first one is short and long. So when someone says a theory is short, it means that it just has less strokes per word. So if you write using less strokes, theoretically, you should be able to write faster theoretically. However, short theories tend to involve a lot more memorization, and not every single thing is based in a rule. That means that even though you use less strokes, maybe it will take you a little bit longer to remember what to type. On the other hand, a long theory may use more strokes per word, which makes it sound slower than a short theory, but usually all the strokes are based on good rules that are easy and fast to recall. The vibe I've gotten from the community so far is that these days, short theories are popular and in. But that's not to say at all that long theories are out of date and should be ignored. Many stenographers are very successful and really fast with long theories. So it depends on you and catering to your strengths and what is more suitable for you and how your brain works. And the next term I want to explain is called real time. So actually, before computers were this good, stenograph machines just record his strokes on a piece of paper, like a typewriter. After the day was done, a stenographer would have to go home and basically translate those strokes into English and create the transcript. And that meant that they could basically use any system they want and leave out punctuation or leave things abbreviated and so on. However, now the computers are better, there's technology so that the strokes from the machine can be instantly in real time translated on the screen into English. This way, people can benefit from reading the transcript in real time as it is produced. A real time theory simply means that you would be equipped to write in real time. But most theories taught today are real time. And the last buzzword I want to show you that's used to describe theories is conflict-free. What that means is basically every word has a unique way to write it, and no stroke or sequence of strokes could correspond to two different outcomes. There's some complicated aspects to this, but a very simple example would be homonyms. For example, take the words peace and peace. A stenographer just writing on paper tape to take home could write these words the same way. P, long E sound, S. And when they went home to translate, they could obviously tell which one it was supposed to be. However, with the computer now translating in real time, we need to have two conflict-free different strokes for these words so that the computer knows which one to translate it to. And different theories will have different ways of disambiguating this. So hopefully that gives you an overview on what stenographic theory is. As always, I'll finish here by talking about my week. How was my week? 
Well, if you can't tell, I'm really tired. I'm really proud that I stuck to my schedule this week. I got all my schoolwork done. I put in all the practice hours. I was consistent. However, the other consistent thing is that it's taking me almost 12 hours to log out of school every day. That does include like meals, breaks, exercise and whatever, but not being able to finish school until like 8.30 is like killing me. By that time, I'm so tired. I can't like work on my other stuff. I skip my Korean study. So I just, I just try to recover and then I have to sleep and get up the next day again. So going into week four, my goal is definitely to keep trying to make my day more efficient. One of my classes, which just basically involves reading a textbook, has been especially tiring and difficult. Luckily, it's only eight weeks long, and that means I'm already three-eighths of the way through, so... For theory class this week, it was also similar. It was still easy. It was concepts I already knew. Just a few outlines I'm trying to re-memorize and change, but I put in the hours, so... I think this week there was like long O, there was OU, there was final K, there was initial N, final N, and double O on the AO. And I also liked that they introduced some phrases and homonyms to memorize. Personally, I like my homonyms to have more of a system like there was in Lapwing, but it seems that they just have complete arbitrary, just memorize it homonyms in this theory so far. I also originally wanted to do a different topic for the video this week, but I really wanted to do it with a guest and I'm trying to find like a fellow student to do it with. It's been hard to connect online with my fellow students so far, but hopefully that continues to get better. All right, see you next time.